I'm Robin Bevan. I'm the head teacher at South End High School for Boys. I've been here as head teacher for 10 years now. It's been 30 years since I made that decision and the starting point for me was a love of my subject, which is mathematics, and enjoyment working with young people. And since then, my motivation has grown and developed. What really inspires me is seeing other people being successful. My staff, the pupils, that's what gives me a buzz every day. You have to believe the future is going to be better than the past. And it's the pupils in our schools that are that future. They're the future leaders, the future managers, the future creators. The people are going to bring about change. So that's why it matters. I think that, that there have been some big changes. One, one of them is uh, uh, an increase in the success of pupils in their public examinations and we've got more and more students going to the top universities. So that's something that I'm particularly proud of. I'm proud of the fact that the school has won 20 national sporting titles in the 10 years I've been here. And I'm proud of the fact when I see uh, a year seven boy on the first day of a school year riding his bike to school. That, that matters to me, okay? independence and growth. There are big challenges. There are challenges that are coming through from curriculum change, new examinations, challenges because it's difficult to recruit teachers, uh, it's difficult to retain teachers. Um, there are the challenges of modern social life, pupils that come from homes where things are not as straightforward as you want them to be. Uh, but the biggest challenges, without a doubt, that we face are to do with funding and finance. It, it, it's uh, an everyday challenge. You need enough money to be able to provide the core curriculum, lessons for pupils, and you need enough money to be able to provide those simple levels of support that every school should have and the opportunities that every school should have. And over the last few years, we've got closer and closer to the point where we simply can't sustain it. In any situation where your income goes down, you look to see what you can cut and save. You look to see what you can do more cheaply. But there's also a point at which you can't do it any more cheaply. And that's the point that we've got to. We've got to the point where colleagues are working as hard as they reasonably can. And to add any more workload makes it unsustainable. So the only option is to stop doing things. The big difference that most of the students will notice is in the size of their classes. The second difference is that with our sixth form students, we've actually had to reduce the number of lessons they get. They used to get nine hours every fortnight of teaching time. They now only get eight hours. So they're getting eight hours in a larger class. That reduces the amount of personal attention they get, the amount of support they get from their teachers. So it's those things that the students notice but they will also begin to notice that we have fewer options available to them, fewer activities being organised, or there are only activities for those who can afford to pay, and that's no way to run a school. This school has a very mixed pupil population. Uh, they come from all sorts of backgrounds, um, and the cuts are having an impact on all of them. But what's interesting, of course, is that if a pupil is coming from perhaps a slightly better off home, they can often compensate for the activities or chances that they've missed out on. If a pupil is coming from a disadvantaged home, there's no doubt that they miss out more than the students uh, from other backgrounds. It's, it, it's really fascinating because you do. You hear government ministers who will tell you that school funding has been protected. Now, in simple terms, they're lying because the amount of money that we receive per pupil has gone down every year since 2012. It's gone down by a substantial amount. What they've done is moved pots of money around, and to be quite honest, they've masked the impact. If you speak to any head teacher anywhere in the country, in any school, they will tell you that either their funding has gone down or it's less than it used to be in real terms because we have to take into account the rising costs of the things that we buy in schools. I'd like to send a message to the Chancellor when he's making decisions about school funding. Every pupil 
only has one opportunity, one chance in a lifetime at school. He has the opportunity to make sure that that time at school for every pupil is a full, enriching and worthwhile experience. Investing in education is investing in our future. And anyone who doesn't invest in schools is looking to the future without hope. He needs to change the way he thinks about schools. He needs to change the way he thinks about funding and ensure every school is properly funded. It, it, it's really interesting because in, in a business world, in a commercial world, you would want to be able to project your funding, your finances over several years. You'd have a good idea where you're heading. In schools, it's really difficult. We rarely know more than a year in advance how much money we're going to get. And when money becomes very tight and the funding is as low as it now is, we end up spending maybe a day a week working on different alternatives, how we can save, what we can do differently. That's not a good use of a head teacher's time. Yes, of course we should plan, but we need to be able to plan in confidence that we can afford to deliver a core curriculum, offer pastoral support, and those activities that underpin a good quality education. When people ask me what the most disheartening feature of this is, it's having to start thinking about eliminating core aspects of the curriculum. It's not that we've done that yet, but it's knowing that at some point in the future, you will have children who simply haven't had the opportunities at school that every generation since the Second World War has had the chance to do. That's what's disheartening. It's that we're in a position where we're having to think about and plan for a future that is as bleak as that. I'm not in a position to say for certain what decisions we may have to make, but one thing's for certain, if the funding in the future does not increase, then we will have to start closing down subject areas within our schools. And this will be true in every school. There will be schools where there won't be any creative art anymore, schools where music is finished, schools where you can't do design technology, schools which don't offer languages. Now that's not a vision for the future of education for children in this country. I'm speaking out about school cuts and about school funding. Uh, firstly, because I care about my own school, but also because I genuinely don't think that most members of parliament or most members of the public actually know the truth. When school ministers say they preserve the education budget, people think that schools remain well funded. If they ask head teachers, they'll find out that in every school in the country, the amounts of money we're receiving are going down. And in some schools, they're going down very rapidly. So that's why I'm talking out. That's why I'm speaking out. Because I really don't think the message has got through yet. The most important thing that parents and other friends of our schools can do is to actually ask the head teachers what the truth is about funding. If parents just read the newspaper headlines and listen to the politicians' sound bites, then they'll think everything's all right. If they talk to the head teachers, they'll know there's a crisis. And once a parent understands the situation that we're in, the most important thing for them to do is to make sure that they send that information on to their MP. It only needs to be a simple letter, postcard or email. Just something that helps people realise that parents know that our children are being shortchanged.